Tony Bartlett, Director for Data Center Compute Solutions at Dell Technology South Africa, joins us for this edition of What's Next. And uh, Tony is uh, the director, as I mentioned, of the Compute Solutions for Dell Technologies. He's responsible for the strategic direction of the data center compute business for Southern Africa. Tony, it's great to have you with us. Um, uh, it's incredible when you look at the growth in data centers and what's happening and how much of the workloads are being pushed to the cloud. Why did Dell Technology choose to power its new PowerEdge servers with fourth generation AMD EPYC processors? So good day, Akia. Great to be here with you again. Um, really excited to be having a discussion around what's happening in this space. Um, let's start with the reality that AMD is one of the CPU platforms that we offer in our PowerEdge platform. Um, having said that, AMD have been pushing the limits in respect to uh, innovation, agility, uh, performance, sustainability being a key benefit and consideration. Um, our customers face many challenges. Uh, they expect it to deliver business outcomes more rapidly, faster in order to be able to remain competitive. At the same time, our customers are increasingly under pressure to reduce operating costs and to do more. Um, sustainability is, uh, and using less energy is obviously a critical and important consideration for our customers at this moment in time. And all this without compromising security. Um, our latest generation PowerEdge servers offer features and capabilities that will address these challenges being faced by our customers. Gee, that's very interesting. And I guess the, the, the energy consumption is always on people's uh, top of mind agenda, of course, and performance, etc. When you look at performance, uh, what performance improvements do these servers provide uh, and relative to the previous generation of the PowerEdge service that you had? So, okay, the, the latest AMD range of PowerEdge servers offer a um, far greater core count per processor compared to previous generations. Um, we're seeing a massive increase in terms of cores by about 50%. Um, we've been able to achieve up to 107% performance improvement over the previous AMD generation. Wow. In addition to that, we uh, deliver a 33% increase in storage capacity and a 50% higher memory uh, density. Um, our latest generation servers also include a host of new industry standard technologies that complement uh, the performance gains that we see in the latest CPUs. Uh, some of these technologies include uh, PCI Gen 5 um, that doubles through our, uh, the throughput of the PCI from uh, Gen 4. Uh, DDR memory that uh, is a new class of memory that will reach up to 4,800 uh, megatransfers per second. And another exciting technology is a new form factor from a storage perspective, uh, EDS uh, FF uh, E3, um, which is roughly half the physical dimension size of a 2.5 inch SSD, which means that you can effectively store more storage in a much smaller footprint. And our AMD servers have broken a number of, of performance world records um, relating to AI um, database and applications. So all in all, a great story in terms of uh, improved performance. No, it certainly sounds like it. I mean, I mean that that is a significant jump from the previous generation of servers. Um, and of course, when you look at the AI and the amount of energy and power that AI uses, somebody was telling me that an AI search or an AI application uses five times more uh, server power than you know your average uh, usage. So uh, it's certainly designed for this modern day work function. You know what, what people are doing on service today. The when you look at the use cases, I mean, I just touched on AI for example. What what are those primary use cases for these Power Edge servers, and and who are they specifically targeted at? So, I mean, uh, you know, we have an extensive portfolio of our PowerEdge servers and uh, that are fit for purpose for pretty much every conceivable use case you could imagine, Aki. Um, we have servers that are suited for mainstream uh, uh, data center compute type applications. Uh, we have uh, a product that is suited for hyperscalers or dense cloud uh, type use cases, ruggedized servers that are optimized for the edge or telco optimized servers, and for applications that require extreme acceleration or, or storage density. Um, our AMD servers can fulfill a vast range of these uh, um, uh, mentioned use cases, uh, but where we've really seen AMD come to the fore and they really excel is in the HPC space. Uh, we've seen significant improvements in the VDI space, dense virtualization, database, um, analytics, and uh, just to name a few of the areas where you are able to use it. In terms of customers, I don't think there's a single customer that would not be able to benefit in some way or form from the technologies that the AMD servers are able to, to, to put themselves into. 
Tony, um, it, it's it's interesting that you know these kind of uh, servers have got uh, such a wide range of use for a wide range of customers, and you know that you know Dell caters from the small to medium sized businesses to the large banks and you know massive customers. Now, Dell Technologies is known for server solutions, and uh, these are the solutions that combine peak performance and um, and easy management. Uh, those are the key things. Could you unpack uh, how Dell Technologies makes it easier to manage your new Power Edge service? Because that's one thing, whenever you talk about people and servers and that sort of thing, they talk about complexity. Uh, but you guys have made it quite easy. Yeah, okay. We have a, a full comprehensive portfolio of systems management tools um, that help uh, you monitor, manage, update, and deploy your server infrastructure. Um, this is great news for customers um, who are increasingly under pressure to manage resources, more and more resources, and more infrastructure with fewer resources. Um, you know, to start with, every server has what we call an integrated remote access controller, which we refer to as IDRAC. Um, effectively, this is a mini server that is embedded um, inside the server and consists of hardware and software. Um, IDRAC allows IT uh, administrators to securely monitor, manage, uh, troubleshoot, update, and remediate Dell servers from any location. And this is out of band and without the use of agents. Um, IDRAC also enables uh, thermal management and uh, uh, facilitates the telemetry streaming of over 180 metrics from centers that are embedded within the server as well. Um, in addition to that, we have Open Manage Enterprise, which is a simple to use one-to-many systems management console. And uh, it essentially facilitates uh, comprehensive lifecycle management for power servers ranging whether it be one or up to 8,000. And the design of Open Manage Enterprise allows plugins for other add-on tools. Uh, one such uh, plugin is Open Manage Power Manager. Uh, Power Manager essentially maximizes power visibility control for your PowerEdge servers. And this plugin lets customers um, really view, measure, and control server power consumption. And then on top of that, we have what we recently launched for our servers is Cloud IQ. Now, Cloud IQ is a cloud-based proactive monitoring and predictive analytics tool. Um, working alongside Open Manage Enterprise, it helps customers discover issues and remedy problems before they become operational uh, uh, issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so Cloud IQ spans Dell servers, our storage, networking, and HCI. And effectively, Cloud IQ will enable you to manage your entire uh, data center state um, across multiple sites. So, uh, you know, comprehensive suite of, of tools throughout. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff happening in the back end that the, the average user doesn't see, but that's what's making the magic and, and making my life easier as uh, uh, using these PowerEdge servers. Customer. So this is, this is great. Now, one of the major focuses of Dell Technologies' new PowerEdge servers is, is how they, uh, they, they, they simplify the implementation of zero trust approaches. And we know the massive focus on cybersecurity and zero trust is what everyone is implementing. Could you explain to us how they achieve this? Sure. I mean, well, the zero trust framework is, is based on a notion of, of trust nothing and always verify, uh, no matter where the request comes or originates from. So it's an approach to security that assumes that every part of the infrastructure is at risk, uh, requires continuous verification and validation. And our PowerEdge servers incorporate a host of features that support a, a cyber resilient architecture with zero trust approach for this entire life cycle mm. of this infrastructure. Um, and the way we do this, you know, we've got a couple of, of areas that you know, I'll talk through in terms of how we do this. Uh, the first is that we, we ensure that uh, we have device trust, uh, which is achieved with silicon based uh, hardware root of trust, which extends through the supply chain at the time of, uh, 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 you know, from the supply chain where we source our components through to the design, through to manufacturing, all the way through to delivery at the, at the end state, um, which, in, which will then provide enhanced and component verification throughout that process. We then offer unit, uh, uh, user trust, uh, which is achieved by offering uh, multi-factor authentication. Uh, you know, mentioned the IDRAC as an example, where, you know, you would need a single sign-on to support and we also offer role-based authentication through that process in our tools. Um, we offer software trust by ensuring that our software, such as uh, our BIOS or our firmware, is digitally signed, and we will prevent the server from booting, as an example, if any anomalies mm. in the certification are identified. 
Um, data trust is achieved by you know ensuring that we have data at, at uh, rest encryption. Um, we have uh, encryption or data in, in use protection. And then we obviously also offer a scalable key management as part of that. Um, in addition to that, we offer persistent event logging, auditing, and security alerts on all of the tools and the systems that we use within the server. And then there's consistency and simplification in terms of being achieved by being able to automate and orchestrate system and security policies. Sure. All in all, a completely comprehensive approach to security, which is provided on all of our platforms. Yeah, it certainly sounds like it. Lots of lots and lots of layers um, to prevent anybody from trying anything funny. Um, and, and obviously, with you know cybersecurity, it's the biggest threat to business today. Uh, when you look at it globally, and you know, there's no sign of slowing down of the attacks. In fact, they seem to be intensifying globally. So organizations are really you know uh, bolstering whatever they can you know, to make sure that their, their servers, their data is secure, et cetera, et cetera. In what other ways does, does Dell Technologies prioritize security, specifically in the PowerEdge servers? Yes, Saki, um, I suppose the, the way to answer that is, the simple answer is that, you know, every aspect of, of, of security is a priority. I don't think we can have a situation yeah. where one aspect of security is more important and, uh, our zero trust approach uh, is integral to the infrastructure. Uh, Dell's approach to security is intrinsic in nature. Um, so it's built in, um, effectively what it means is it's built in, it's not bolted on or it's not an afterthought. Um, and it's integrates into every phase of the server life cycle from, as I mentioned, from the time of design through the manufacturing process right through to the end of life. And we continue to innovate to, to meet the growing um, ever-growing uh, security threat. So I wouldn't want to say there's any one aspect of security more important than the other because any loophole or any any uh, area where, where, where uh, security is compromised um, is a disaster for you as a customer. No, 100%. Okay, well, let's focus to 2023. I mean, it, it's so interesting how businesses are prioritizing different things this year. The, the cloud is still a massive priority. Uh, security, as we spoke about, but businesses must prioritize the reduction of their carbon footprints. Everyone is talking about it. You, manage, you, you, messaged, you mentioned how energy efficient these new servers are. Um, and, and, and I think that's great. Now, can, can businesses take what the, uh, you know, t take these energy savings from the power edge servers? Um, with this particular focus in mind, when you look at carbon footprint and, you know, what you put in your final year, uh, 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 you know, results, et cetera, et cetera. And everyone yep. is very conscious of their carbon footprint today. So how do businesses gain something from this? Yeah, sure. Look, I mean, uh, sustainability is, uh, is a massive area. I think every single company is putting forward their, as part of the ERG report, uh, you know, documents in terms of how they are achieving some of the goals around sustainability. Um, from a Dell perspective, sustainability is, is pretty much core to everything that we do. Um, you know, we've set ourselves some really key targets uh, in, res in respect to uh, sustainability. Um, we have a number of what we call moonshot goals for our 2030 uh, uh, time period. And, and just to highlight a couple of what these 2030 moonshot goals are is for every product a customer buys, we'll be reusing or recycling an equivalent product. So think about that. 100% of our packaging will be recycled and will be based on renewable material. More than half of our product content will be made from recycled or renewable material. And we aim to partner with our suppliers to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 60% uh, per unit revenue. So we're making great progress in terms of, of achieving these goals. And this is where um, you know, you'll be able to get a little bit more detail. You mentioned ESG type reporting. Our 2022 report has you know, a significant amount of detail around what we're doing in this space. Right, right. We're also making this uh, uh, progress uh, uh, based on three main pillars. Uh, you know, first one is innovation of our products, uh, the use of sustainable materials, and then uh, obviously the en energy efficiency of our products itself. Very so if you look at a little bit more detail in terms of what we're doing in innovation design, um, you know, we continue to engage and com uh, collaborate with uh, suppliers like AMD, um, who are guided by similar principles and seek to achieve similar, similar goals. So um, our experiences, our experience innovation group, as an example, invests significant time and money in R&D and testing and exciting brand new design ideas. Um, you know, every design decision we make uh, uh, drives towards reuse. 
Uh, our products are built to last. Our products are modular and easy to, to repair. Um, we aim to use less material right from the start. And uh, we use recycled or re renewable in, uh, materials wherever possible. And we make it easy to harvest the material at the end of the product life cycle. So part of that recycling process, we make sure that it's easy to remove those components for further recycling or reuse. Yeah, listen, I can... That you're also driving... Sorry, I want yeah, to tell you that I, I, I can I can support what you're saying. I mean, I recently bought two of these uh, uh, Dell 27-inch monitors, the 4K ones, and yes. I just I couldn't believe the packaging. You know, the, the you know it just to what you've just been talking about. Everything was you know made from a certain type of cardboard that's obviously recycled, but every every yeah. I, I could see exactly what you're talking about. Every single part of that packaging was recyclable, and I thought yeah. that was amazing. Yeah, I mean, uh, just in terms of, of material, uh, you know, I'll give you a couple of exciting uh, examples of what we are doing in this space. Uh, obviously, you mentioned recycled plastics and, and metals, uh, you know, as one aspect. But uh, another uh, exciting, uh, I wouldn't say it's innovation of Dell, but we form part of a consortium and uh, which relates to um, recycling ocean-bound plastics. Uh, last year, Dell Technologies uh, saved over 200 tons of plastic, which was destined for the oceans. Um, this is done through a partnership with a, a company called New Wave Plastics, and we use this recycled ocean-bound plastics as part of our products and packaging. So, you know, that's one example. Another one is that we are uh, we we use recyclable plastic, uh, which is made from castor bean and uh, byproducts of wood pulping. Um, and much of our packaging is sourced from, as you mentioned, you know, recycled paper, uh, bamboo, or, or sugarcane byproducts. And another one that you probably wouldn't be aware of is that uh, we do quite a bit of, uh, uh, you know, um, carbon fiber harvesting from the um, airline industry, as an example, or the aerospace industry, as such oh. industry. So, you know, this whole notion of of recyclable as well as uh, um, uh, harvested, uh, reusable product, not only in our package, but but in our product itself. So it's quite and possible then, uh, I, I might uh, have a, a, a tiny bit of a 747 in my notebook, right? <laughs> uh, it's, it's quite possible. It's quite possible. <laughs> um, and then just, the, you know, we mentioned uh, the, the materials we spoke about, uh, um, uh, the, the innovative design, but uh, we, we shouldn't uh, forget about the energy efficiency as well. Um, you know, we're designing um, and developing products that are based on reduced energy uh, use and emissions while obviously not compromising the performance. And uh, the latest generation of servers um, offer great improvements in terms of performance per watt from its predecessor, uh, predecessors. I've actually seen uh, actually about a five to one or even sometimes a six to one consolidation ratio. Um, if we had to try and compare uh, the performance capabilities of let's say our 13th generation or 14th generation to our current generation. Mm -hmm. Now effectively that means that a refresh of your aging infrastructure will enable customers to greatly consolidate uh, the infrastructure from perhaps five or six servers into one and uh, without, as I said, compromising performance which, and still at the same time achieve, achieving a massive uh, footprint reduction. So also, um, you know, uh, at the same time, reducing your power. So having those consolidation ratios and reducing power. Um, you know, and then our servers are also designed with uh, innovative smart cooling options uh, that combine uh, thermal technologies uh, with intelligent control. Um, SmartFlow is uh, one of the examples um, as part of our design considerations. Um, and it's achieved by a redesign of some of the, uh, for example, the shape of the motherboard. Yes. Um, and then the optimized placement of components to make sure that airflow is not inhibited in any way. Um, you know, where we position the power supplies in the example, making sure that you can maximize the airflow. And then at the same time, if you've got this improved airflow, you can reduce the the spinning of the fans, which is a, where a lot of the performance or power is being used. Um, we've seen reductions of up to fifty two percent, but just changing sure. the design to improve the airflow, um, and therefore just by by all means, you know, cooling the components as effectively as possible. Our latest generation of servers, we have seventy percent more sensors built in, um, and this provides much more uh, a dynamic power and cooling capabilities. So with all the sensors being available, you know, you've got almost a closed loop system where, you know, if a component doesn't need to be cooled as much, well, then you don't need to have mm. the fan running at such a high speed. Um, we have a range of products that support air, air liquid or immersive cooling or immersion cooling 
um, for optimizing inefficiencies as well. Um, we know that liquid cooling is much more efficient at, at cooling products. So, you know, where we've got these really, really dense requirements or GPU heavy environments, um, liquid cooling is the way to go. Um, and then we're offering tools such as Open Manage Power Manager, which I really mentioned as part of that uh, tool set, uh, which can help us automate uh, insights to improve sustainability efforts, uh, provide performance by allowing you to respond quickly to power issues, optimize, optimize your power usage, and then track your gas emissions, um, all of which are combined to help uh, protect against energy rising cost, uh, you know, rising cost of energy and uh, essentially making the world greener. Sure, Tony. That's uh, that's uh, pretty impressive, and uh, and and you know, if you just look at the the massive jump that's happened just in three years, never mind from last year or yep. two years ago. I mean, the 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 technology that was around three years ago to where it is today, the efficiencies in power. I mean, I just look at my mm. notebook, um, and and you know how it it just gets rid of the heat in a, in a very unique way. Yeah. Um, and, and you just touched on, on on the servers. You know, all of this combined just makes a big difference to our carbon footprints. And I think we all need to be globally responsible when it comes to things like this. Uh, Tony, it's great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time and for joining us on What's Next. Thank you, Aki. I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to provide an overview of what uh, we, uh, Dell, together with partners like AMD, are doing um, in the data center, uh, particularly as it relates to our data center co compute platform. So thank you very much and uh, really enjoy your day.